Dams vs. Queens. Beaver vs. Porcupine. Who wins? Let's find out. I am Mario and this is Animal Battle. So how exactly are we going to select the winner of this animal battle? The rules are straightforward. We are going to compare our two candidates based on the six sacred characteristics, which are agility, attack, defense, intelligence, bonus skill, and survival. After that, you will be the ones to vote for the winner in a poll. Simple as that. Also, stick until the end of the video to find out who is the winner of the previous animal battle between the Tasmanian Devil and the European Badger which was also selected based on the same principles. Before we go to their stats, I need to clarify something. There are actually two distinct beaver species, the Eurasian and the North American beaver, but they don't differ that much in size, diet or behavior. There are a lot more porcupine species though, that can be categorized into two groups, the Old World porcupines that live in Europe, Asia and Africa, and the New World porcupines from North and South America. Old World porcupines are generally larger and terrestrial, whereas their New World cousins are smaller and can climb trees, with some living their entire lives in trees. That being said, let's go right to agility. Being large rodents, beavers and porcupines are not particularly fast on land. Porcupines typically reach speeds of 3 km per hour, which is… ok, I guess? Old World porcupines can also swim and rarely climb on trees, but the New World ones are better adapted for climbing with their long claws and tails. Beavers are also quite clumsy on land, but they are really powerful swimmers. They can dive as much as 15 minutes without going to the surface to breathe. With their webbed feet and broad tail, beavers can reach incredible speeds in the water of up to 55 km per hour. Now we shall see their agility stats. Their agility stats are not remarkably high, but they might not actually need great mobility due to their special abilities. It is time to move on to bonus skills. Beavers have a keen sense of smell, hearing and touch, but have poor eyesight. As an adaptation for living in water, their eyes are covered by a nictitating membrane, which allows beavers to see underwater. Porcupines also have a great sense of smell, and hearing is the most acute of their senses. They can also dig burrows to live in and are monogamous, meaning that a pair of porcupines will stay together for life. A family of porcupines is called a pickle, but because they forage alone, there is no great benefit to living in such families. Beavers may have a better family structure. They live in groups consisting of monogamous pair and their kids. The kids learn important skills by copying their parents' behavior and help in raising smaller siblings and in their craft. What exactly is this craft? Well, it is their special ability. The ability to shape a landscape to satisfy all of their needs by building a dam. Beavers are considered the keystone species because building a dam on the river results in the creation of large ponds that affect countless species in the area. They are truly ecosystem engineers because the impact of their dams on the ecosystem is second only to human-built structures. In order to build these massive structures, beavers lay a strong foundation of stones and logs and then cover it with branches and mud to stop any leaks. They are genuinely paranoid about leaks having an uncontrollable instinct to patch up any leak of water in their dams. We know that dams drastically affect environments, but what's in it for the beaver? First of all, beavers are no longer vulnerable with their low mobility on land if they can just live in the ponds they've created. The pond is also where beavers build their home, called a lodge. The lodge is so strong that even a bear can't break it and the only entrances are underwater. In this way, beaver kids are safe and warm even during harsh winters. The pond created by beavers also gives them easy access to trees using construction or as food, and they can even dig tunnels to increase their swimming distance so that there will be no need to venture on land. After beavers chew and fall trees with their iron reinforced teeth, it is way easier to carry branches in the water. Some branches can be stored on the bottom of a lake so that there will be plenty of food during the winter. Their incredible engineering skills might just make up for all the other mediocre stats of beavers. and. Changing the environment instead of opting for a higher mobility or defense is quite a unique and ingenious strategy. After all, isn't that what we humans have been doing all this time? By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, why don't you drop a like and subscribe to fool the algorithm that my videos are actually good. Now let's see their stats. Beavers are clearly leading due to their special ability. 
Is it possible that porcupines will make a comeback? Let's go to their attack and defense stats and find out. Beavers are the second largest rodents after capybaras, reaching 80 to 100 cm in length plus a 25 to 50 cm long tail. They can weigh from 11 to 30 kg, with the largest individual recorded weighing 31.7 kg. Porcupine species range a lot in size, from the Rothschild's porcupine weighing only 2 kg to the crested porcupine which can weigh up to 27 kg and measure up to 83 cm in length. Now, what would you like to order? For you, Mr. Beaver, I can recommend some tree bark, leaves or aquatic vegetation. The beaver will go for the usual tree bark this time. It has powerful jaw muscles and endlessly growing incisors used to chew trees with ease. These fellas are quite strong too, being able to lift their own body weight in timber. Still, their teeth are not good enough for defense against predators. If beavers are outside their pond, they are utterly vulnerable to a huge number of predators like coyotes, wolves, mountain lions, black bears, wolverines, canine and lynx, foxes, golden eagles and bald eagles. Yeah, they'd better stay in their ponds. What about you, Mr. Porcupine? May I recommend bark, roots, fruits, berries or perhaps some farm crops? The porcupine will forage on the ground in search of vegetation and can chew on bones for important minerals like calcium or salt. Isn't it dangerous to forage like that during the night? Here comes into play the porcupine's unique ability. Its dense cover of sharp quills. The quills are basically modified hairs coated with thick plates of keratin embedded in the skin musculature. When the porcupine is disturbed by a large predator, it will raise and find its spikes to make itself look larger. If it is continuously bothered, the porcupine will charge the disturber back first, trying to stab the enemy with the thicker, shorter quills. The damage inflicted by the quills would not be that dangerous if not for their secondary effect. The quills have small barbs on their tips and will get stuck in the predator's skin. The porcupine can easily release its spikes, but the same cannot be said about the predator. It will take even more damage if it tries to bite again, and if the quills are not removed, it can result in the predator's death. This defense is incredibly efficient against large carnivores, and it is the reason why porcupines don't even need high agility. So due to their special ability, porcupines are back in the game. Going quickly over their intelligence stats, I can mention that porcupines and beavers have average intelligence. Beavers being slightly better here because they need to be smarter for dam building and their slightly more advanced social structure. Yes, this is it. And last, but not least, let's talk about survival. Both are listed as least concerned species in general, with a relatively high lifespan for rodents. Beavers living up to 24 years and porcupines up to 27. The beavers will give birth to 3 to 6 kids at once, while porcupines have 1 to 4 kids at a time. The population of these animals was way higher in the past, but has been reduced by human hunting. It is sad hearing that, knowing how important are beavers for the ecosystem and just how cool are porcupines. Let's see their final stats. So they have interesting stats, specializing more in just one distinct ability. Who is the winner? It is up to you because you can vote in the poll right there and leave your opinions in the comments down below. Oh, it's already time to announce the winner of the last animal battle between the Tasmanian Devil and the European Badger. Long story short, the European Badger won. If you wanted the Tasmanian Devil to win, don't be upset because here, on I'm From Animals, we love and respect all animals. So, once again, don't forget to vote the winner of this episode's battle in the top right corner. And if you like what I make, consider supporting me on Patreon to fill up the Patreon list with her name. Respect, animals.